to another episode of our Ultimate Decades Challenge. We are in the year 1389, and as you saw in the beginning, we have already gone through the three, well, four now, deaths of this portion of our first part of January, February, and March of 1389. We have unfortunately lost Demarcus Meshram, Maximus Arendelle, David McGrath, and unbeknownst to us, Abby McGrath also caught leprosy and had to go and pass away as well. And losing Abby McGrath, it did make our McGrath children orphans. So they have moved in with Katia and Alan Eldridge. Katia is um, a Harding and she was or is their aunt. So she is their closest relative. Um, and so because of that, she has taken them in so that they don't have to go into the orphanage. Um, as we know, these two don't have children of their own. They did have a couple of sons, but they lost their children to death. And so she has graciously taken in these children. So we are going to be seeing her take care of her nieces and nephews and helping to raise them up the rest of the way until they are of marrying age and putting aside her, well, I mean, I guess I say putting aside her life, but she's not really putting aside her life because if I'm being honest, she hates the fact that she can't have children um, or that she lost her children. And so she is actually kind of glad that she has some children to take care of and so she is loving the fact that she has someone now to take care of. So she has moved into their home. Her and her husband have moved into their home and will be raising them and taking care of the McGrath children. So we will be seeing Katya and Alan take care of these children here. It looks like Alan has decided he likes gardening. Yes, you can like gardening. That's perfectly fine. So they are obviously really, really sad from losing their mom and losing their brother, David. Um, they are in mourning currently. We are also going to be seeing the adjustment of them having new parents. But, I mean, parents, relative term. You know what I mean. She has not adopted them yet. I probably will have Katia go ahead and adopt them. But it does look like we have Katarina Augustine who has gone into labor. So let's go ahead and head over to Katarina's and let her have her little one. Okay, so we have arrived here with Katarina. We are just going to go ahead and let her go inside and have her little one. As we know, she did have a child already that she lost. And now I guess she is having another child. We are hoping that this is a viable birth for her. Because as we know, she does want to have a child. She did start her um, marriage and having babies late in life here. So um, hopefully, you know, she will have a successful birth here and this baby will make it. <clears throat> She's like, boy, this is uncomfortable. And they've had a son. All right, so we are just going to open up the wheel for boy names and go ahead and give that a spin and see what it is we're going to name this little boy. Radomir. All right, we are going to name this little boy Radomir Augustine. And it is a single birth, so we will be rolling for mom and baby. Let's go ahead and pull up our dice. As we know, mom can't roll a 1, and baby needs an odd 8, 10, or 20. So let's go ahead and roll for mom. She rolls a 5 and survives this childbirth, and baby is going to roll and get a 2 and is not going to make it. Oh, Radimir, you poor, poor thing. All right, so I will put on the timeline that Radimir has died, and we will take Radimir away from mom. All right, so it is really, really sad <clears throat> for them because they were only able to have two baby tries 
and they had two sons and both sons were stillborn. So unfortunately we are not going to have any more baby tries with this family and they do not have any successful children living. So unfortunately Katerina was unable to bear Lucian any children that were able to be viable and so she's not going to have the experience of being able to be a mother which is going to be really really sad for her and I really really hate that I really do um, I'm pretty sure that she is really going to struggle with that fact considering you know she definitely wanted to have children and she's now not going she's not going to be able to do that I mean, she did get her wish of obviously being able to be a, a bride um, and be a wife to someone, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, she is not going to have the experience of being a mother to anyone. And so I hate that for her. She does get to be the stepmom of oh, William when? here. Yeah. But William uh -huh. is a young adult. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of not the same thing. He's already grown and really, to be completely honest, probably needs to go ahead and get himself married up. So we'll probably try to look to see if we can find him someone to marry. So whenever someone comes <laughs> due to get married, we Tell will me. probably go ahead and marry him up. Who is marrying soon? It does look like Anora Like is marrying soon. Um, oh. So maybe he could be a possible person for her to marry we'll just have to see how that goes so I'm just gonna go ahead and get her getting some things cooking here we don't have any birthdays on the timeline for the schedule the majority of things that are happening this year are a multitude of death we have a lot of death happening in 1389 we are probably just going to see if there are any births coming down the way and if there are any anything like that. If there's anybody having any babies, we'll be trying for babies and we obviously will be killing a bunch of Sims. We are going to be checking in with our main household in this episode because we did not do that in the um, last episode over the last couple of episodes, oh, we weren't Steve. able to check on our <laughs> oh, um, main household at all because we were so busy. So we will probably go ahead and check on them. Can you kind of clean up a little bit? It's it's really kind of gross in here. Ooh, so I really like for busy. you to kind of pick up a little bit. That would be fantastic. Her needs are in fantastic shape. Your needs are in fantastic shape. And Lucian is just getting a little bit of sleep, even though he doesn't really need it. But I think he is... Actually, no, he's crying over the loss of the baby. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So he is just upstairs crying it out. He's really, really sad about the loss of the baby. I absolutely hate that for him. I really, really do. We have some plants out here, um, but they don't really need anything um, as far as being tended to or anything like that. Maybe I will have him go out and go hunting a little bit. And maybe you can actually go out and you can go hunting as well. And maybe I can get you to go out and go foraging a little bit. And that will be great. We will just send everybody out doing some nice little things here for the house. So let's go ahead and send them all out to go hunting and foraging. And then when they come back, we'll see what goodies they bring it doesn't look like we have any news from Lady Whistledown. There's nothing going on. And let's see what we got from everybody. We got some strawberries and we got some seeds and we got some parsley. So we can go ahead and we can just plant um, a couple of these for our garden here, which will be fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and get her to come and plant some of these things. All right, what did he get? He got a pigeon and a chicken and a turkey. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and give that to Katerina. She can use that for cooking. And it does look like Lucian is still currently out and about doing some hunting. He has his um, deceased wife's tombstone in his inventory. I am not going to put that in our cemetery because, you know, it, it just is what it is. She also has two Flanagan, McMathen, 
and Blossom McMathen. Um, okay. Are those people part of our family? Like, those names don't sound familiar to me. I don't think they are. Who are those people? And why are they in your inventory? That is super weird. All right, that's perfectly fine. All right, and he got a chicken and a pheasant and some venison. Okay, we love that. Let's go ahead and give all of this meat to Katarina. And now that they have planted everything and foraged everything and gone out hunting, as you can see, we just have the men here. They are chatting amongst themselves while they stand out in the rain. We love that for them. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to head over and let's go see our main household and check in on them. Okay, so we have arrived here in the main household and we are just going to check and make sure everyone is doing well. As we know, we do have Elmira who is in her third trimester. She is going to be having a baby quite soon, which is really good news. Florence is doing good. Alexandru is doing good. Can is good. And Amy is good. All right, we love that. As we know, Alexandru is scheduled to die this year. He is not going to be with us much longer, which is really, really sad. And we know he is the heir, but he is just unfortunately scheduled to pass away. So we are hoping that she is going to be having a little boy because we are going to need us a new heir. I mean, it just is what it is, people. It just is what it is. Um, can you... Can you do anything with these goats? Let's uh, bottle feed this one. And can you maybe bottle feed this one? And then maybe can you bottle feed this one? She's like, I don't really want to do any of that. Okay, fine. Maybe I can get you to bottle feed them. Because your wife is like, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, well, I think you should definitely do something. Maybe you should cook something. Because honestly, the family might need to eat soon. And I don't know. I just feel like maybe you should do something with your time. All right, we can't do carrot pudding. I don't I don't really want to do boiled eggs. And all right, we can do raised meat pies. Let's do that. All right, so Amy is down here. She is, you know, just being really playful. We love that. As we know, she did age up to a toddler. So everyone is finally you know, big enough to kind of get around, which is fantastic. We absolutely love that. I'm going to get you to come over here and do a little bit of stacking so that you can obviously get to being better with your movement. And Alexandru, what are you doing, son? You are feeling really sad because you're gassy. Okay, well, you know, I mean, that is what it is. All right, and you are going to maybe do something. No? Okay, there's nothing that he can do. We can sell some honey from the beehives. Um, are any of these plants needing anything? No, they're not. All right, so there's literally nothing that he can do as far as the plants go. So how about once you're done with that, you can come out here and practice your archery. And you can get, you know up on that i'm gonna get you to come out and clean the coops and that will be fantastic and you can also collect the eggs so i will get florence to take care of the chickens while dad takes care of the bees and get some archery practice in can is doing some stacking and amy honey you are what go potty no, playing in the potty. Okay, let's not do that. Oh, she loves water. Okay, but you're loving like gross water, which is not okay. Let's go ahead and potty train you. Mom's like, I really wish that you would not play in the toilet. Can we not do that and say we did? Okay, and then we'll potty train you. How's it going? He's like, it's going all right. I'm pretty good at this. No, you're not. You're shit at this. Oh, she's gone into labor. Okay. Well, that was fast. All right. Let's go have your baby. I was going to have you potty train Amy, but it would seem that instead you are going to have a baby. So let's go have a baby and find out what we're having. Look at her. She's like, yeah, let's because I am freaking miserable. This is for the birds. I know. I know. 
It's not any fun when you're in labor. But let's hope you're having a boy. We definitely want you to have a boy. So fingers crossed for a male. We need an heir. Come on, Elmira. Give us a son. It's a bloody girl. All right. Well, no heir for this family. Let's go ahead and open up the wheel for girl names. And we will give that a spin and see what we're going to name this little girl. Emiliana. Emiliana. I don't know why it said it like that. That was hilarious. All right, Emiliana. And we are going to name her Emiliana Arendelle. Oh, she did have a boy. Let's open up the boy names and give that a spin. Bloody hell, we are having twins. All right, what is this baby's name going to be? Ada. Ada. All right, Ada. And Ada. Yeah. All right, so we are going to roll the dice for mom and babies. As we know, we can't roll a one, and we have to roll twice for mom. So the first roll is... A four and the second roll is a six mom has survived both of the childbirths for Emiliana she needs an odd eight ten or twenty we roll and get a four Emiliana is going to get the axe and Ada please Ada is going to survive okay our heir has survived woohoo all right I not that I'm not sad about Emiliana I am I truly am but we definitely needed an heir so let me go ahead and update the timeline with this information and then we will take Emiliana from mom. All right, so we are going to go ahead and take Emiliana away from mom and we will age up Ada. So who is this one? Emiliana. All right, Emiliana, you are gone. And Ada, you are going to be aged up. So let's get her to come over here and give this one a feed. This bit, uh, crib is obviously going to be taken care of. We'll get rid of that crib. Uh, Look at Xavier's freaking out. Look, you had yourself a son. You need to calm down. All right, so let's go ahead and feed this little one. No, we can't feed this baby. Okay, fine. Can you rock this baby? And then we will age up this little one. And we will then hop into Cass give Ada his makeover and get his photo for the family tree. All right, and he is a Virgo, modest and shy, introverted Vir Virgos take pride in their meticulous and practical approach to life. Unfortunately, these same traits can result in a very fussy individual. They get along with other Virgos and are often attracted to Aquarius and Sagittarius. They don't match with Leo or Taurus. Okay, so Ada has ended up being a wiggly infant, and let's go ahead and give him his makeover and get his photo for the family tree. so that is perfect there is little ada as an infant as you can see xavier is feeling super confident he's really excited that they have another little boy and obviously they have no idea that alexandru is about to pass away but we are really thrilled that we have another little boy in the house obviously they're probably pretty sad about the fact that emiliana passed away but you know they are happy that ada has survived and we absolutely love that. Okay, you are really, really gross. So we're probably gonna need to give you a little bit of a bath. So let's go ahead and queue up for that. And he's just loving on 
little Ada right now. And then we will go ahead and give these children a bath because like Alexandru even needs a bath. Like everybody needs a bath. What is up with these children? Like gross. Um, what are you doing? Oh, she's just going to eat herself a jar of honey here. Okay. We, we love that for you. All right. Very good. Where are you headed? She's going to go out and talk to Amy. Okay. Great. 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 Um, what are we doing with Amy? A beanie shrozy. She's like, what are you doing out here? And Amy's like, I'm just watching the goats and the chickens and the sheep. And I'm having a really great time. And I do think that Amy probably is having a really great time. But Amy is really, really sad from losing Emiliana. And Amy is feeling pretty hungry. Oh, Xavier and Alexandru are going to be strict. Yeah, sure, that's fine. He's not even going to be around that much longer. So, I mean, if you feel like you need to be strict with him, you do you. Let's get Amy inside so she can grab herself a little bit to eat. And, um, okay, you need to also come in and grab yourself a little bit to eat because you're feeling pretty hungry. Oh, my God, all of the children are starving. Come and grab yourselves food, please. Everyone, come grab yourself food. Oh my god, even Xavier is needing to eat. What is going on? Everyone's starving. Like, everybody go eat something. Wow. It seems that the only one that is not hungry is um, Elmira. And that's just because she literally just went and had herself a jar of honey. I'm just going to have her go ahead and do some weaving of some fabric here. And we are going to see how that works out. Maybe she can make a little bit of money doing some fabric making. She has been doing some thread making and some yarn making. I don't know if she will actually use the thread and yarn on the weave maker or not. I don't really know how that works. Look at that. Where are you going to put that? Why would you put it on the fireplace? I don't think that's a good place for it. <clears throat> Why don't you give him a little bit of a kiss and then tell him a bedtime story and then he can go on to sleep because I think he's just tired. Maybe he's not even tired. He's just hanging out. Oh my gosh, you are so pitiful. You didn't eat or anything. Ridiculous. She's like, no, I'm ready for bed. Okay, fine. Go in here and get yourself some sleep. This is just ridiculous. Oh my goodness gracious, alive. Alexandru, you need to come and go to sleep too. This house is just a bloody disaster. Everyone in this house is just a bloody disaster. Why are you crying? All right, he's coming up to go to bed. I mean, the only one in this house that's worth a damn right now is... Florence, if we're being honest. She's like, why so many kids, Dad? Why so many kids? And he's like, well, you know, we need children in the house, and it's good for us to help out. Can, you, can we put this stuff away? She's like, I'll put the food away. It's just lying around on the floor. I mean, Florence is really being a good help right now. She really is. She's feeling totally energized. Omar, why don't you go ahead and if we have any wool, we do. You can make some thread. Are you going to the loo? Yes. Okay, great. We love that. Amy is really starting to feel tired. Why don't you go to bed? She's like, there's not enough beds in this house. Okay, fine. Go have yourself a little bit of a nap then. It is starting to get pretty late. Everyone does kind of need to go ahead and get themselves a little bit of sleep. All of our goats and stuff are starting to get elderly. All right, you're an adult. You're an adult. We're just going to take a look at our animals and see, like, how old are they? Because some of them are elders. You're an elder. All right, let's go ahead and we will trade you for money. What are you? You're an adult. What are you? 
you're an elder. Let's trade you as well. Let's trade you for money. Look, she's like, I'm asleep. Why are you making me do this? Just get up and trade these. Just trade them. Just do it. Yes. We're going to trade that one and we're going to trade this one. And let's go ahead and trade for money. Actually, yes. Let's trade these for meat, actually. All right. So we've got a young adult, a young adult, a young adult, a elder, elder, young adult, elder, and a young adult. All right. We'll sell three of those. Because honestly, like, I don't want our chickens coming and going for like, not, not simoleons. I, I want to trade these for meat. Yes. Trade for meat. Young adult, young adult, young adult, elder, elder, young adult, elder, young adult. Yes. All right, so that's perfect that we've done that. And she's like, great, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that I've done that. We've traded our goats that have gotten old and we've traded our chickens that have gotten old. And Florence and Xavier have decided that they're going to have a difficult family dynamic. I think that makes perfect sense. As you know, Florence was not raised by Xavier. She was raised by Roger and Diana. And she got with Xavier when she was significantly older and they are starting to build their relationship but now he's got all of these other children that he's having and I think it would make a difficult dynamic for them I think that she would think that you know why is are you having all these kids first of all when you haven't really even bonded with me and you know she doesn't understand why her dad and her just can't you know be just them she, like, she doesn't understand. She's just a little kid, and he's trying to explain to her, like, I have to have a wife. I have to have children. I need an heir. And she's like, it doesn't make sense to me why you have to have a son. Why couldn't I be your heir? And he's like, because you're a daughter, and you can't carry on my name. And she's like, it doesn't make any sense, Dad. And he's like, I understand that you don't understand these things, Florence, but it just is the way of things. And she's like, I just don't understand. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Look, she's giving him the thumbs down. She's like, that stupid dad. And he's like, it just is what it is. But they have created themselves um, a little bit of a difficult family dynamic. She is really struggling to kind of get um, an understanding between her and her dad. And I absolutely hate that for them, but it does make good sense. All right, you come over here and grab yourself some of these eggs. All right, what's the problem with you, sir? Nothing really. Nothing is really the problem with you. Everyone else seems to be okay, other than Xavier, uh, Alexandru, who needs a little bit of food. We'll get him up and let him get a little bit of food. He also could use some hygiene, but I'm just going to cheat that. And you also could stand for a serving of eggs. All right. And then I'm going to make you go upstairs, and everyone's going to head themselves off to bed we desperately need to go ahead and get some sleep. Um, why don't you go ahead and come over here and get yourself some sleep. And then everyone will tuck in for the night. It is really, really late. It's like 11.27 p.m. And we are almost heading in to um, April of 1389. In April of 1389, we will have some more deaths that we have to deal with. So I will be doing that. And Alexandru is unfortunately on the list of one of those people that will be dying in 1389, um, in April of 1389. So we will be seeing that take place, which is unfortunate. It really is. But we can't really help that too very much. Why don't you come over here and have yourself a little bit of a power nap? Um, I know that is probably not what you want considering I could have sworn we had a trash can in this joint, but it would seem that we don't. So maybe I find us a trash can. I know that's like technically not an indoor trash can, but you know, it is what it is. I told you to go to bed, sir. I told you all to go to bed. 
please go your asses to bed. Why are you not sleeping? Go take a nap. Amy's like, I'm just going to wander around the property in the middle of the night by myself as a toddler. Or let's not and say you did. Please go lay down. Just take yourself a nap on that there couch. Okay, so it is the next day. It is Sunday, April of 1389. And Xavier is up, as you can see. He is just going to come downstairs. It looks like he's about to go and clean his teeth, which we absolutely love. We are going to go ahead and do some deaths, but first I want to go ahead and roll the dice for our season. We actually missed Summer Harvest. Um, we didn't necessarily miss it, but there wasn't anything to harvest. So um, because of that, we didn't do a harvest. So we are going to roll for the season. We got a one. Basically what that means is that we are going to, for our, we're going to have poor soil. Okay, well, I will update that and we will have poor soil. So let's go ahead and update that really quickly on our lot trait here. Um, poor soil, where is that located? Poor soil. There's great soil. Poor soil. Where might you be located? So we've got bugs, and we've got crops blight, and there you are, poor soil. All right. Okay, let's take away the bugs. All right, so poor soil, and we have updated that. Let's go ahead and head over to our um, timeline and take a look and see who is going to be passing away. Okay, we have taken the three people that were dying in April, May, and June, and they have now been dealt with as far as their deaths go. Ivan Shoemaker, Mara Like, and Alexandru Arendelle have now passed away and been placed in the cemetery. And we are going to continue on. The Like girls have now moved here into the family of Carly like um, because she is their aunt um, she is their closest relative and so they are going to be living with her now as opposed to going to live in the monastery so they'll be staying here with their aunt and with <laughs> unfortunately Archibald von Schwann so they are um, their family has significantly grown so I don't believe they will be having any more children for a little while because they are going to be raising up Blanca and Nadia and Amis because as we know her mom their mom Mara has just passed away due to diphtheria and so now they are going to be taking care of these girls and they will be raising them up until they are old enough to wed and so there's that. As we know, Carly is in the process of transitioning into a vampire currently. And so she is, you know, going through this change. And so we have her really going through a lot of changes currently. Oh, speaking of, she is transitioning as we speak. Oh my goodness. All 
right. She is officially a vampire. I, I definitely don't like what we've got going on here. We'll have to, um, we'll have to change um, <laughs> what she has um, on for her vampire outfit. That's not at all accurate, but that's okay. Um, but she has fully transitioned over into a vampire now. She is immortal. And so I think they are, you know, thinking are going to probably think, you know, their, their aunt is a little different than what they remember, but it is nonetheless their aunt and their closest relative. So we are, you know, just going to be trying to carry on with taking care of them. She obviously has her, her children that she has to take care of. And, and now she's going to be raising the, her nieces as well. And, you know, she is a very nurturing person. I don't think changing into a vampire is going to change that about her. I don't think she's going to, like, lose her humanity or anything like that. So I don't think there's really anything to really worry about. So that will be fine. Carly and Honora want to be jokesters. Okay, fine. So she is just talking with Honora. As we know, Honora will be in 1390 going ahead and getting married. So she will be moving out of the home and she will be marrying, and she's um, ruled to have nine children. She's a little bit dramatic. I mean, just a smidge. Um, but she will be moving out, and so that will free up a little bit of a space into the family. So that will be good. And we will have them, obviously, go ahead and see maybe if this family decides to progress and grow and change any in that situation. But... I cannot believe we're already in 1389. We are at the turn of a new decade here with this family, with these communities. And we'll be seeing soon how these families have changed and how much our communities have grown. And, you know, unfortunately, we are in the process right now of losing a lot of um, community members. So it is going to change our community quite drastically. Look at her singing. Let's go check on Archibald because I can't deal. Oh, he's just uh, doing a little bit of writing here. Okay, we love that. <laughs> her, Nora and Carly have gained a sentiment um, while Carly was singing to her, so we love that. So as we know, all of the light girls are definitely going through some sadness because they're mourning their mom being gone, so we hate that for them. I think maybe I might get Carly to come downstairs and do a little bit of cooking. Um, as we know, she may be a vampire, but the children aren't. They're going to need to be able to eat. Um, why don't you come down here and serve some lunch? Let's do some... Oh, I don't know. Let's just do mac and cheese. That's fine. So it is currently almost 2 p.m. in game, which does make us going into May. Or, well, we are in May. May of 1389. And we are almost done with our um, part here. Resume this mac and cheese and make this family some food. Come on. You can do it. Resume the mac and cheese. Why are you refusing to cook? Resume the mac and cheese, Carly. She's like, I'm going to go instead and give him a bath. Are you freaking kidding me? Can you resume the mac and cheese? And someone make the bloody mac and cheese. Look at him. He's like, I'll cook the kids some food. It's perfectly fine. Carly, on the other hand, is clearly, you know, going through some things. I don't know what her deal is. Oh, she just wants to love on him. She's like, I don't even care. I don't even care about feeding the children. Let's just, you know, let's be romantic. And he's like, no, we have to feed the children. I mean, at least he cares uh, enough to feed everyone. Let's call everyone to a meal. I don't know that you guys need to necessarily eat the mac and cheese, but... I mean, you're vampires. Okay, well, everyone's going to go ahead and have themselves a meal here. We absolutely love that for them. Why don't you tell a story to Godfrey, and then you can read him to sleep. Nora, why don't you come and throw some things away? There you go. Perfect. Oh, he's acquired the literacy skill. We love that for him. Oh, 
I was thinking about one of my favorite toys and can't find it. I'm sorry to miss it. Just keep looking for it. It's perfectly fine. Everyone needs to go ahead and start getting themselves ready for bed. I clearly can't click on anyone and I can't send them to bed. So we absolutely love that. The game is once again rearing its ugly head at me, um, which is fantastic. So I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when new episodes go live on the channel. And I will see you guys in our next episode of the Ultimate Decades Challenge, where we will be in Part B. We are going to have some more deaths, but we will have some birthdays in that portion, as well as... Um, some teenagers that are going to be aging up so we'll find out if we're going to have some um, people that are going to be finding out if they're going to marry or not which is going to be really great and until next time I'm going to go ahead and fly for now. Bye Ravens!